Good morning and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's walk. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your host, Danny Graham, and I'm back with another episode of The Road to Wisdom, and I thank you all for tuning in and checking me out. Today, as you can see, the topic is going to be endings. Endings are necessary. Endings are necessary. And the definition of things that end is the conclusion. Finish of an outcome refers to the termination of something. The point where something ceases to exist. Let me say that again. When things come to an end, it's the conclusion. Finish of an outcome refers to the termination of something. The point where something ceases to exist. The scripture comes today from the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the eighth verse. And it reads as follows. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than than the proud in spirit. Let me say that one more time. The book of Ecclesiastes, 7th chapter, the 8th verse, reads as follows. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. How many times have we heard that phrase, all good things must come to an end? That's true. All good things as well as all bad things must come to an end. Um, in order for something to start anew, it has to end. In order for something from the old regime to, to, to reflourish and sometimes to get better, it has to stop. It has to die. It has to cease to exist. And something new comes in. And sometimes it can be better. Sometimes it can be worse. But guess what? When God's working, when God's working in your life, when, he, when you have uh, him first, when you're praying, when you're in your word, when you're in... Your, uh, your connection with him is strong. Sometimes God's going to end something that you think is good. But guess what? You think is good and what he think is good could be totally two different things. We never know what God's thinking. And God is always up to something as long as people are devoted to him and, and living the way that they should, living a righteous life. And sometimes something that you think is good is going to end because God needs to get that out of the way to get you prepared for something that's good. So, sometimes things that end, even death, um, can be a, a, a preparatory uh, tool God uses to prepare us for something that's going to be even better. Something that we didn't even an anticipate. Sometimes we ask for it in prayer, sometimes we don't. But if we are devoted to God and we do things that's pleasing to Him, then God rewards us. But sometimes we got to end something that we're comfortable in. Sometimes in our comfort, comfort zone, has to be ended, and God's going to push us out of our comfort zone sometimes and push us somewhere else. We may be scared, just like Moses was scared and afraid, but God always encouraged Moses and told him, look, I'm going to be with you. Yeah, you're scared, but I need you to go back into that, that back into Egypt. Do what I tell you to do. I'm going to be with you. Those same times, at the same time, in the same way that God was with Moses, he's with us here now. God does not change, but we just got to have faith. It's the faith of a mustard seed. That's all. That's what the Bible says. The faith of a mustard seed. And sometimes something that we think is not good, or something. Sometimes we think that something that is good, when it ends, you're like, oh, we all bummed out and upset. But guess what? That's God's plan because He's taking out, using that old stuff, getting rid of that old stuff, that old way of thinking, that old process you were doing, and putting in something good. And sometimes what He puts in, you no, know, all the time when He puts in, and you do what you're supposed to do. It's always going to be better. Um, like I said, it's human nature. When you start something, um, if you have the right mindset, you always want to finish strong. Uh, you know, for instance, like, and let me give you a prime example. Like the president's, uh, the presidential race is coming up this year. This is an election year. And by uh, man's law, uh, you can only be president for two terms, which is a total of eight years. A lot of times these presidents come in or these elected officials come in, they have a lot of promises. Some keep it, some don't, but there's a lot of backdoor stuff with some of these politics, some politicians. And But most of the time they want to try and have, or their intent is to try to have 
a legacy. And if they know it's their second term, a lot of times things that they implement and put into their first term, they want to try, and if it's something, especially if it's something positive, they want to try and leave their name, so to speak, or their mark in history. They try to finish off strong, especially if they know that their days are limited. Some people, some presidents, some elected officials want to end strong. Some just want to, some in my opinion, just want to line their pockets or do whatever their agenda is. But most, for, I believe strongly that human nature is that if you're doing something, you're doing it for the right reasons. You may start off kind of weak or shaky because you're uncertain. But you always want to finish strong, just like when you run a race. You start off at a certain pace, and then when you almost get to the end of the race, the coach or the people always encourage you, man, finish strong, finish strong. That's human nature to want to finish strong. But you know when you finish strong, a lot of times when you get that urge to finish strong, in a lot of cases it's the end of that, that particular race, that particular time in office, that particular position at the job, or that particular place at the church, or whatever whatever situation that happens. You always want to finish strong because you know it's going to come to an end. And a lot of times endings can be sad. A lot of times endings can be, sometimes it can be very cruel. Sometimes it can be very unfair. But sometimes that ending is necessary in order to get change. And sometimes God's going to do things that we don't quite understand. Maybe not even like, but guess what? If you have faith, must succeed faith, then God's going to be with you. And that change, that new change that's coming, is going to be definitely something better. But in order for that change to start, it has to be an end. Um, Sometimes uh, uh, an emotion that we feel as humans when things change, especially if we don't want to change, is anger. And a lot of times that anger is because, especially if we're benefiting from it, a lot of people say, why? Um, there's a saying, why reinvent the wheel? Why fix something that's not broken? Well, to us, to humans, it may seem like everything is running good and it's copacetic. But in the spiritual way of things, God may be like, no, this is not working. This is broken. You can't see that this person is doing ABC 1, 2, 3. And in order for it to get straight, you're on the, the correct path. I have to end this. And sometimes people be in situations where things end and they're benefiting from it because they know deep down that maybe something just ain't right. But guess what? They still do it because they're benefiting from it. And a lot of times when you're benefiting from something, especially financially, or in a position of power or influence. When it comes to an end, a lot of times the first emotion that comes out is anger because you know that, so to speak, that gravy chain, that gravy train or that golden goose to stop laying those eggs, it might hurt you in a financial way or in a, a way of, of power and influence. But good things always come to an end. So, and I think uh, definitely now after being saved and after becoming a believer that God is going to put his people in position to succeed. And there's going to be a lot of things that's going to end that's bad or or evil or or unrighteous so God can create and make things new. Life, um, if you believe if you're a believer, the new beginning is going to be the rapture. So life as we know it is going to end for some people. And then it's going to be a beautiful beginning for some people, the believers, because if your name was in the book of life and you're in that rapture, then it's going to be an end to life as you know it here and then a beginning of an eternal life. So in, in, in order for you to get to that eternal life, your life here on earth in the way that we currently understand and can fathom time and reality is going to change. It's going to end. It's going to become something that's so much more eternal and, and, and life-lasting and spiritual that... I, I can't even, I don't, I don't think the mind can even comprehend that. But that rapture is going to be the beginning, and then life as we know it here on the earth is going to end. So if you're a believer, that's definitely going to happen. Um, there's a saying that anger often lies in a fool's heart when mistakes happen. Most of the times, if it's something that's crazy or, or not beneficial, a fool is going to be angry. But a wise man is going to realize that, look, this change is necessary. Um, yeah, some people are benefiting, but everybody should be benefiting. In order sometimes for everybody to benefit, in order for things to be fair across the board, then you're going to have to uh, end some practices, some beliefs, some rules and regulations are going to have to change. Because I'm a prime um, believer in this. This comes from Star Trek. The needs of the many outweigh the need of the few. And... Uh, 
if the, the few are, are benefiting, then there should be some kind of change put in place where the many can benefit instead of the few. The few should never, in my opinion, um, benefit more than the many. But that is a way of life here in the United States, in the world. There's a few privileged that seem to benefit and the rest of the world or suffers to a certain degree. But that's going to come to an end. It should come to an end. It should, it should come to an end where everybody should be able to to get affordable health care, um, not be homeless, have enough food, have a job, have plenty of money just to survive. But in order for things to happen like that, something's going to have to end. Uh, capitalism, I guess, is one thing, and all kind of kind of crazy things that's um that's currently in the world. But that's just my two cents on that. Um, a lot of times when things end, there's a lot of, there's a, a feeling of uncertainty because when you're used to something, and when you're in your comfort zone, then you don't want change because you want them to get up and, and start your routine. When anything messes up or disrupts your routine, and a lot of times. We as humans get agitated, get upset, like, why? Why is he coming here changing this? Uh, everything's down to a science and stuff. But you got to be adaptable. And you got to realize that when there's new leadership in any aspect, church, school, work, whatever aspect, whatever situation in your life, and when there's someone new, there's probably going to be a change. And um, you'd be very wise to be adaptable to that change. Especially if that's something that you want to do or, or somewhere you want to continue to go to if it's a church or a school or anything of those sorts. Um, one thing I suggest you should do is whenever there's a change or when something ends, uh, take the time to acknowledge your feelings about that potential thing that's ending and, um, and not be sad about it. Just acknowledge, okay, yeah, I don't like this, but maybe I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to give it a chance because um, this new person that comes in has good ideas and stuff. Uh, in my profession, um, uh, about seven or eight years ago, there was a, a, an election, and I was one sheriff had hired me, and the new sheriff was coming in, and there was a little bit of uncertainty because you heard certain things, and you didn't know whether or not this new sheriff was going to come in and totally change it or have a totally different style that you wasn't comfortable to. But I had an open mindset. I said, look, as long as they come in here, treat me with respect, let me do my job, um, don't come in, hey, I'm going to rock with it. And to me, that was beneficial. It worked out. It worked out very good for me. New sheriff, my new boss, is, is awesome. One of the best sheriffs, I've, the best sheriff I've ever, ever worked for. And uh, But when there's change and it comes an end to an old regime that you're used to, then like I said, sometimes you'd be like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know what this new sheriff going to do. And there's a saying, it's better to deal with the devil you know than the devil you don't know. And a lot of times when things end, there's a saying that pops up in the mind, like, hmm, I knew I knew this situation, but I don't know this situation, so what can I do? All I can do is just acknowledge, hey, look, it's going to be changed. I may or may not like it, but I'm going to at least give it an open, give it an opportunity, give it a chance to see whether or not this change is positive or negative. Um, and reflect on the situation. See if it's something that you can do. Maybe this change that's happening and maybe this thing that's ending may be better for you than you actually realize. So just because something ends that was maybe benefiting you, then guess what? Sometimes the new thing that comes in can be even more beneficial. So say, so take time to reflect and see whether or not the situation is as bad as it seems. Um, remember the good times and, and take some of the good times and some of the good things, the good habits, the good practices from the old regime or the thing that has died or the thing that has ended and implement that into the new. Um, just because something has died or something has stopped, doesn't mean that you can take some of them or you can't take some of those components and add it into the existing thing that's living in or that's in place now and, and enhance that even more. So make sure, remember the good times, all the good things you can do and bring forth with you on the new thing. Make sure you do that. Focus on what be next. Focus on what you used to do and focus on what you, your new orders may be now, the new things, the new way that the, the leader or the pastor or or the boss wants to do things, and just focus on that because guess what? Just because something is new doesn't mean it's always bad. And just because something is new doesn't always mean that it's good. But you got to at least give it a chance, give it a fair chance to see whether or not to determine for yourself whether or not it's something that you can um, become a part of or something that you have to move on from. And, uh, 
and just celebrate the new change. Celebrate the time <clears throat> before and after the change. If you know change is coming, man, celebrate and remember the good times you had with the thing that's going to end, and then be open for new ideas. Those are just some few things you can do. Um, I think that I read research that you can do when you know things are ending and something new is happening. Now, when it comes to biblical terms, things end for a reason because if you keep, I'll, get, I'll use this example, like training wheels on a bicycle. You're trying to teach your child how to ride a bicycle. So if you have the both training wheels on the bicycle and then as he or she gets their balance, then you, uh, you take one training wheel off and you see that they're stronger maybe on the right side, so you leave the left one on or vice versa. And then there's going to be one day we're going to take both your training wheels off. They're going to be a little wobbly, but you're going to hold the back seat, and you're going to go with them down there, and you're going to let them get their balance and get their courage and get their confidence up, and then you're going to release them, and then they're going to ride the bike. And once you learn how to ride that bike, it's going to be the end of those training wheels. They don't, they're not going to ever want to go back to it, but if you keep those training wheels on forever, they're never going to get their balance. They're never going to get... Their, their their footing, their their confidence because they know there's a safety net. So don't don't cripple or don't be so dead set against things that end in because if we keep things on forever and ever and ever, there'll be no death. There'll be no uh no birth. Well, let me change that. If we things don't change, there's no room for growth. Even though we have loved ones that die, we have people that die, that's a part of natural life because when things die, same way people die, when things happen that are violent, the things that are beautiful that happen on the other end. There's birth. There's people that save people. There's people that um, that do great things, but sometimes it's going to take a death of someone, a loved one, or, or a person or something that's going to spark a fire or interest it's something that's good. Just like, for instance, mad, mothers against drive, driving drunk. Something very uh, tragic in a life ended, but it sparked that group. It sparked that inspiration. It sparked those mothers to, to go out there and learn about um, the, the problems and issues of drunk driving and then to educate people. So, yes, yeah, something bad happened. Somebody life ended. Several people life ended. It was very traffic, very tragic. But in that tragedy, they found a purpose. They found, I guess so-called, I don't want to say the lining, but they, they found something positive out of that ending, and now they created something that's even better. So and a lot of times when things end, it can spark inspiration. It can spark um, creativity to increase or to improve something that was, that, that was broken or possibly needed up, an upgrade. But in order to get an upgrade, something has to end. I'm going to pose this question. Uh, when the Israelites first got out of Egypt, they were wandering in the in the in the uh, they were wandering around for forty years in the wilderness. God provided them with manna. In case you know what manna is, manna is like heavenly bread. Every morning it come down on the ground. They wake up, they go and they get their fill their baskets, get enough to eat. And for forty years, every morning when they woke up, God rained down that manna. One day that manna stopped. Why do you think it stopped? It stopped because God knew that they were getting to a point now where they couldn't be dependent on him for that manna, that they were going to be pushed to the next level. And the next level was to go into this land that had agriculture. It had fruit. It had grapes. It had different kind of watermelons, all kind of crazy stuff and food that, they, that could sustain them. If you constantly let them get that manna, they would never have the desire or never learn how to evolve to the next level, the next step in the evolution of their growth. And that's why he stopped the manna. Yeah, it, it's fantastic to have something, but guess what? As good and as convenient and as necessary as the heavenly manna was, there was a time when God had to stop that because if he didn't, they would be totally dependent, not want to learn things for themselves. Not learn that there's something more than this. That something. Look, I I I've sustained you, but now you're in a, you're in a position now where you can sustain yourself. That's why he stopped the manna. God stopped the manna. He would teach them to show them that there was other things out there that you can get. So, 
was it necessary for their growth of the Israelites? It definitely was. So when things end, God has a plan, especially if you're living a righteous life, you're living for him, you're praying to him, you ask for stuff. There are going to be things in your life that's going to stop you, things that you think are good. But if God puts into it and you're truly following and walking in his ways, then you have to be understanding. You have to, even if you don't understand, you have to have faith that God is knows what he's doing. God does not make mistakes. And God is going to end some things that you think that shouldn't be in. But guess what? Those endings are necessary to get you to the next level, to get you to that next step, to power you up, to level up, so to speak. That's a new phrase a lot of people are using now, level up. God's going to level you up, but guess what? When he levels you up, he's going to end something that you may or may not like. If you don't like it, that's just going to be tough because God's going to do it. God is in control. But if you do like it, then that's just icing on the cake, cherry on the top of the icing. But that's just my two cents on uh, things that, that about endings which are necessary. Um, in all parts of life, the things are going to come to an end. Good things are, are going to come to the end, and also as well as bad things. Everything runs in a season. All seasons come to an end. Sometimes in the South, it don't feel like it. But guess what? There's a winter. There's a fall. There's a spring. There's a summer. It can't stay spring all the time. It can't stay winter all the time. It can't stay fall all the time. It can't stay summer all the time. Things are going to come to an end. And it's necessary in order to keep growth and keep things going in the natural flow of, of our nature. Before I get out of here, I'm going to read a quote to you. And that quote is, the thing about new be beginnings is that they require something else to end. The thing about new beginnings is that they require something else to end. And before I got here, let's, I want you to make sure. People always say that when they go to somewhere new, or some people, I won't say, a lot of people like to say that when they go somewhere new, a new job, a new church, a new home, a new profession, whatever the case, I hear a lot of people say, I prayed on it. I prayed on it. And I think some people do pray on it, but I think some people use that because it's something to say because it sounds good. You make sure when you tell people or you say something that you prayed on this, that you really prayed on it. Because if you're saying that you prayed on it, you really didn't pray it on it, and you had con con conferred with God, you, you, you're you bound to make a mistake. And you're bound to, you might end something that's good or a place that God got you in, but you're saying that God put you somewhere else because you want to do it. Not because God is telling you to do that. So you've got to make sure that some of these things, some of these decisions we make is because God tells us that, or God truly did put us there. Not because it's something we want to do. Not because it's a bigger church, or it's a bigger school, or it's a high-paying job, or it's a more prestigious job, or whatever the case may be. Because a lot of times when we, the enemy man, he knows what we want. He knows our weaknesses and desires. And a lot of times he can say, yeah, and then we'll... Because we were around a certain people or a certain group, we love to say, yeah, I prayed on it and I did this, and they ain't prayed no more than the man in the moon. So uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of that now, especially after being saved. So make sure if you say that, and you really mean it. Because you you saying that you prayed on it and you haven't prayed on it, or God tell you to do this and you know God ain't said nothing, that's just your own wants and desires telling you that you want to do that, it's a recipe for disaster, just in my opinion. But hey, again, that's just my two cents on that. Um, if this is your first time ever seeing me on this channel, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. I definitely want it and need it. Also, hit the notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload here in the future. Also, hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Don't ask me how. I just know that it does. Leave a comment because any comment that you decide to leave, I will read and respond back to you. And last but not least, whenever you watch my videos, please watch them all from the start to the finish because that also helps with the YouTube algorithm. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I go to work this weekend, but I'll be back on Monday morning, which is Martin Luther King's um, birthday, the holiday. Hope everyone enjoy it. And until then, they have a fantastic weekend, and y'all be safe. See you then.